say much. I'm just here to show you guys with a bit of how I kill my charts, you know. Obviously, I'm gonna speak about your NASDAQ, you know. So, what moves NASDAQ. And just one of the key things to look at, taking care as well. And what to obviously just monitor in terms of the fundamentals, the key fundamentals around NASDAQ, you know. So, I wanna give you guys, that's, really, that's the reason I have my comments off. So, yeah, I can see the graph all out. So, I'll tell you guys one thing that obviously moves NASDAQ is... Uh, just wipe this can. Give me a second. Gotta wipe my back camera. I want you to see. This is my basically okay, this is my trading view. So my trading view, obviously I do all my lessons, my trading views, my trading views as soon as I come here. My majors, okay. I always look at what helps obviously tell um well not tell when, when Nasdaq is going. What helps with our uh, positive movements of Nasdaq? We are your S and P five hundred, obviously your Nasdaq. You know, just the, your naturally all your big investors. You know, and uh, your Amazon, Apple, and all of that. So I'm sure, obviously, if you guys do know what moves Nasdaq, you should know about what's going on. Let's get into the chart. So what happened with Nasdaq is that it's quite simple. So I'm gonna put the full landscape. Only y'all can see this shit. Hey, now you're gonna have to twist your head, but it's alright. This is my 50 minute chart, so I'll go into one hour so y'all can really see what's been happening. So I'm gonna break down what's actually been happening. This is actually a free, free breakdown of the macro. Y'all should appreciate this. It's a free breakdown of this chart. Um, so let me get into current price. This is my daily chart. Obviously, y'all can see that Nasdaq dropped a few days ago. Run about the second of let me just do that. Run about the second of February. Yeah, second, second of no, second of September, sorry, second September, Nasdaq hit a, a very major drop there. Oh, we all know that Amazon, you know, uh, Apple, and all our other major stocks also did kind of lose value. Our big investors like your Warren Buffett, Mark, Zab Mark Zagobek, your Tesla, a lot of big investors obviously did actually lose a few billions in that. So if you lost money on this drop, you're not the only one. You know, all all big gurus lost money. You know, so. Let's 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 focus on basically what what's what's next. So what's next what's next for Nasdaq? Let's let's I don't want to do this man. So let's let's get into a, a more lenient time frame. Let's let's go to I'd say uh, roughly let's just jump onto one hour. So let's see what's actually what's been happening lately with Nasdaq. As I zoom out, I'll tell you that ever since the drop, so ever since the recent drop we've had with Nasdaq, which happened here, around about the second of September, we've been failing to come back. If your people have been saying, "No, we're going back up here," it dropped again. We're going back up here, it dropped again. Initially, because when once stocks drop, see, stocks are very different. So once shares and all investors pull out of a certain phase, or something happens in the industry or in the market, it is easy. It's very easy for it to drop, but it's difficult for it to go back to normal. So um, price can fly up. But once it drops, it's very difficult for it to actually gain momentum, especially with phases of how Apple lost money and how Amazon also crashed, had a slight crash and things like that. So the big question is, what, what are we expecting for this? Because last week we said, no, we see Nasdaq obviously gaining its best momentum. It did kind of give us a very good, um, I would say, signal of like, no, we are going back up now because of this movement. You know, so this movement here... You yeah, can see my my, my cursor. There. This movement here was giving us that, uh, yeah, a leadership. We're pushing back up momentum. Nasdaq movement, then bam, Nasdaq drops. Okay, so what you need to expect now with Nasdaq is that anything is possible. You know, anything is possible. Uh, but however, days are getting better. So I see the next two months of Nasdaq we will definitely be facing up as usual. Our buy, buy, buy our buyers will be as hot as possible. But for now. What's your goal on making money on Nasdaq? It's quite simple. So you don't want to be that guru guy and say, no, me, I'm going to take a buy and hold forever. I'm going to say, but you need to always jump into zones of the graph that look tradable. So Nasdaq is not in a zone where you can hold for fucking two weeks or a week. You know, you got to be in, in and out. You know, a day is good enough. Make your profit and kill it. It's even very difficult to trade Nasdaq on a one hour, four hour time frame right now at the moment because... It's very volatile. It behaves like a nuthead, you know. One candle, uh, one moment, a candle can be literally, can be literally this long. Can you see? And then lives a week. So you need to, at times, at the moment, I've been killing Nasdaq literally about thirty minutes in and out, ten minutes in and out. 
a long stout hold is about a good five you know a day possibly if it's really moving positively that day but at the moment things are really tough because of the coronavirus and the pandemic has really fucked up the industry you know investors are trying to come back in hard remember that nasdaq is the most powerful move there's no there's nothing that pays better than nasdaq obviously we have our german 30 us 30 s p 500 and all of that but nasdaq is the most relevant and good paying you know it's the highest creating millionaire um indency or whatever whatever you guys want to call it currency or in the industry at the moment it's really paying you know so let's let's focus on this one hour so let's say what, what are we looking at i would say so i want to go out and highlight my, our previous nasdaq remember the nasdaq is an all-out buy it's an all-out buy chart so all it does is that in in its nature it's supposed to rise nasdaq rises but what are we facing right now is that nasdaq has been experiencing a bit of difficulties trying to actually get back to its normal momentum get back to its normal momentum so it's quite difficult for it to actually gain the strength in one remember that the reason i have the comments off is so you all can actually see my whole chart clear and shit like that you know and things remember that whatever i'm saying you don't have to take it in just take you know whatever you want to take and then learn whatever you want to learn and that's just it you know nothing much i'm just giving my bit of input i am not the forex jesus I'm not a founder of, of fucking Nasdaq. I'm not anything like that. I'm here just like you. Fucking killing it as usual, you know. So let's go. Um, In phases like these, where we're actually going through times like this with Nasdaq, you still want to make your money. But you want to deal with smaller time frames as much as you can, you know. Understand, okay, for the past few days or the past week or so, two weeks, Nasdaq has been dropping. So you need to understand we're on a kind of a major sell happening. You know, and we're sitting in a zone where it's refusing to go to go lower. However, it keeps creating new lows. You know, so there's a chance that we might see potential drop for the whole week. However, things can change and start pushing up. But what you need to do is to be very skillful when it comes to Nasdaq. So, let's go to our 30 minutes chart. Let me show you how to actually kill this shit. I'm a technical, so I'm a full-on technical. I do follow up on fun, uh, of of our on our, our Nasdaq fundamentals initially because some of them can be quite powerful remember that even our half past three movement has not been as sharp as we used to it because of you know pandemic got on us you know and things like that so let's say change time frame so our 30 minutes my 30 minutes initially is just showing a drop that happened i think right i think it was on thursday i'm not sure was it thursday 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 today's the 20th 19th thursday or friday i don't remember but this drop it was friday actually this drop actually happened you know so as you can look here us the buyers were killing this nice buy comfortably as it climbs pushes up comes back on 30 minutes we fuck it up just like that even on 30 minutes it's just a bit too long so you want to go a bit down because it's quite too volatile so this is a way i'm showing you how to trade nasdaq during the pandemic how i've been killing it even when we ended the pandemic but during tough times of nasdaq when nasdaq is having a tough time giving its natural movement nature let me show you how we kill it let me show you how we still hospitalize it you know so what we do is it's quite simple i'm gonna change time frame let's deal with five minutes for example so you come up to five minute time frame what you see is nasdaq so remember that okay let's go to back to 15 minutes let me show you something on 15 minutes what nasdaq has done is that on friday it dropped you know drastically just like that after dropping it started picking up all you need to do is don't try be jesus here there's no nasdaq don't fucking try be i don't know jerusalem here of nasdaq all you have to do is just follow what this thing does like it goes down to go down with it goes up go up with it especially with time like this you know be more confident in your buys you know be very careful on yourselves but just be as calm like just follow follow whatever it does so all you gotta do is i can tell 15 minutes that's that dropped on friday came back and then obviously gave us a low here low around this section instead of picking up previously before the market closed when it picked up it refused to respect its previous its previous low to give us a new high so it broke that low broke this low and gave us obviously a high there and pushed a bit up so if you if you what well, i would say on 15 minutes and five minutes nasdaq has been pushing up basically late friday i say from half past five friday now run about this phase so let me just highlight that y'all need to know that you need to follow everything it does if you want to kill nasdaq follow it takes literally one small move with nasdaq a buy from this zone here and just do this move this thing here so nasdaq literally buying from here to run about this area here is good money already that's good money this is fucking five minute time frame so you need to be able to kill nasdaq let me show you when the market closed from half past five on friday the market from then was pushing up after a drastic drop that happened you know it was pushing up 
and when it's pushing up on five minutes even five minutes wasn't able to give us our technical momentum our ups and downs so you go you can tell it pushed up there stay came a bit down you know gave us a sort of a low zone run over that area here and that would be obviously on this side so it give us a nice low respecting that area there it pushed up again hit a buy right there it pushes up again confidently in profit comes back gives you a low this low becomes obviously this becomes a new low based on your previous high zone remember that with technical trading it's always the same rule previous high becomes a new low so always nothing it doesn't work out like beyond anything beyond that so this obviously from this area here this high see this high once the, the market killed that low there it pushes up goes breaks that high comes back and respects it once it's, it's giving you a respect zone like this on five minutes just so you're about to see something quite big be smart shift it to one minute one minute is where actually now we kill movement so let me just zoom out nicely so with nasdaq you to be a profitable trader with nasdaq you need to be able to kill it on every single time frame so you can tell the after the market from this area here from this area here when the market started to push up it pushed up comfortably and what was coming back it left a very a high zone here which was a low area on this side so if i highlight that for you that was the next buying area so this high zone here was the previous low on the downtrend that it had just happened a few hours earlier on friday so this becomes the new high the market comes but pushes up nicely they comes back and sits here you can see it sits there comes to be giving you a new low on the previous high take that buy confidently it goes up you're looking at the market goes up and once it breaks that part here it breaks that you hold your buys put your stop loss if not i don't even put my stop loss i hold my buys wait for it to come give me a new low on the previous high just like that gives me a new low on the previous high i smash the buy again it pushes up one more time once it pushes up as you can see there breaks the high once it breaks the high wait for it to give you another low there the low will always come on the previous high or on the inner low of the previous high all my students know when i say inner low of the previous high what it what that is obviously y'all need to still learn what the hell previous low inner lows and shit like that but if you're a trader you can't understand what i'm saying remember i've taken my buy from this zone i take a buy here take a second buy here i'm not scared pushes beyond that zone comes back in again so nasdaq has got a tendency of not just leaving a certain area at that same time so it can actually try to consolidate and stay in the same zone especially on one minute time frame you know five minutes sometimes does actually just ride it but one minute does play around a lot because we're talking about a lot of candlesticks that are coming at the same time so in, in 20 minutes you have 20 candlesticks so you can expect to actually stay around the same zone for quite a while before it can do anything so from there gives you a low it breaks that low breaks that low obviously i mean breaks that high it will always push up no matter how much money it's giving you it will come back and you add your buys it comes the, the next low becomes on the previous high so the rule is that whenever the market is going up the next low will be on your previous high if not previous high the inner the in the, we call it a, a, the inner high you know of the previous low area so in a high in a high something like this so the market decides to drop sometimes it can drop as low as this area here or this area here. that is basically the the armpit like, like the deeper side of it so it's a it's an inner high of the previous low this is a low section but it's got a higher side of it that sometimes the market does push there to that low but it hardly happens with that case actually we have that scenario right here so the market decides again just before it closed it pushes up so just before the market closed it wasn't an uptrend it pushes up breaks that high so once it breaks this high i'm gonna show you guys as more buys it goes up it refuses to go beyond it refuses to go a bit up it comes back in puts this trade a bit into a negative you're still been deep in profits from these buys these buys and all the previous other buys there as well you know just remove that sorry sorry hey, trading view it pushes down see this push down is not as scary as it pushes down it goes to a section that i call a inner low so it's a low obviously it's an inner low so basically this section is where the market decides now that it is it is actually going to rest on the inner low basically on a, or the previous low section just on the inside of it the, the higher side of the low previous low section i call it the inner low section or inner high section initially because i didn't know how to describe that part you know when i was still teaching people you know so uh, Um, when Ash speaks about technical movement and resistance, we're speaking about something that's very powerful. See, even with this zone, right now with the market opening, we're waiting for one thing. I'm going to highlight this high. The market is still closed. I'm going to highlight this high. This is one minute. So I do this. 
So we expect one thing to happen. The market is currently sitting not on a low because it has a powerful low that we actually would have taken a buy from before the market closed. I wouldn't have taken a buy because I'm seeing something like when the market opens that the market actually closed on a, on a very high, on a nice high resistant right there. We might see a very comfortable gap that will open run about this area here or making a triple bottom and then we'll start pushing up. If not, we're seeing it do a key push, a very strong gap to the upside that will break the gap, should break this high here. And then for about an hour till probably around 1, 130, it should work on dropping to come resist on this previous high, previous high section, giving us a new low. And then before 3.30 in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning, we can be adding our buys around about 2 o'clock, 2.30, 3 o'clock, we adding our buys. And as usual, as usual, we kill our buy and sleep momentum. So what only thing that you must always do with NASDAQ is follow what it does. Don't try be some doctor here. Just follow what it does. Don't try to be some, I don't know, whatever you want to be. Follow movement. This, this is the easy, easiest way to make money. Follow movement. It goes up, comes down, you buy. It goes up, comes down, you buy. Follow the supported trend. So you cannot sell on an uptrend. It's very stupid to take your sales here. It's one minute, literally one good buy here. Fund your account, 1,500, 2,000 rand. Hit your bloody buy at this point. Once you hear your profit reaching around 2,000 rand, to a decision whether you're gonna close or hold. If you close, you, your balance is 4,000 rand, wait for the next buy entry, you fuck it up again, you got bigger margin, you got another five, five 10,000 rand in profit, it pushes up in profit with you, you decide whether you're gonna hold or close, your profit is now, your balance is around 10K, hold or close, you take another buy there, you fuck it up, you push. What I do is that I hold, I'm a holder, but obviously, right now with Nasdaq misbehaving like this, I, have, I refuse to hold. I always make sure I go in as in and out as much as possible. That's just my input right now on NASDAQ. All I'm saying is that on NASDAQ, as skeptical as it is, avoid holding for days. Jump in, give it one hour, break it down, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, see market momentum, check direction, kill it, follow it, just ride it, one minute, five minute, one minute, five minute, one minute, five minute, that's all, one minute, five minute, that's all it is, nothing major, you know, so, um, just, just that, I hope y'all can actually hear me or y'all can actually see, I might be a bit far. Some are saying it's blurry. I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's blurry, man. I don't know. But I'm seeing it clear on my side. So, yeah. Um, other than that, I hope you guys really understand what I'm trying to say. There's not much I can say about Nasdaq, man. Remember that in order to tell the future movement, in order, it, remember that in order to tell your proper future movements of Nasdaq, whether Nasdaq is really going to start picking up, you got to have to go look at your S&P 500, your, your Apple, your Amazon, whether are they also picking up value? Those are the big moves of the market, you know. Um, follow up on the on the major fundamentals on it, so you can actually tell. Okay, fine. Investors are coming back in. We are expecting a buy trend. We're expecting the market to crash very soon. You know, when the pandemic hit, a lot of people actually lost a lot of money. They're like, no, that's the crash. That's the us. I was driving to Cape Town when when the drop happened, and we were expecting it because that was just a few days before our president was gonna announce our lockdown. And already in the U.S., the people are already on lockdown, and the whole world was shutting down. And we saw the sell coming. So we pulled out of the trade and waited for it to give us a drop. And once it spiked down, we waited for a high and we took the sell. You know, we picked up, I mean, we dropped with it. Even when it was picking up recently, those that actually bought on the, that overall low will tell you that no, it was a movie. Millions made. Remember that if, the crazy part is that if you had bought NASDAQ during the pandemic, if you bought NASDAQ around about May, yeah, mid-May, end of April, right now if you found your account 5000 rand and bought took five trades 0 0.01 with nasdaq right now you'd be selling sitting probably in prop, an average of about roughly 1.1 million in your account per trade so you'd be chilling on a, on a proper three three four million rand on profit if you just bought which is 5000 rand and held for that long when that buy actually started recovering on nasdaq so people don't actually look at that but nasdaq is a platform for money you know, it's a platform for money. Like I said, even with my graph, you can tell. What are we expecting for this week? Um, uh, what are we expecting for this week? 
uh i'm not at home so i can't really guys show you guys on obviously on my tv and you know and we just break it down for you so um all i can say is what are you expecting for nasdaq this week uh we'll have to see what it does i'm seeing a pullback so one hour saying to us let's go back to one hour and overall let's try give let's try search for what what are we expecting what is the, the a big picture of nasdaq so nasdaq recovery if nasdaq does go over this zone here if we manage to break this zone this previous low right if we manage to break that zone and completely shut out of it and go over this part here right then you see nasdaq definitely picking up and going back to normal upside momentum but obviously that would mean that also s p and apple and amazon are now starting to pick up and warren i hope what jeff jeff bezos and warren buffett and them are also quite happy and they're gonna start putting their money back in you know and things like that but if you see if nasdaq is refusing and it keeps consolidating around the same area you gotta use the same technique i showed you Go down to small time frame, one minute, five minutes, fifteen minutes. Break it down, monitor the trend, fuck it up. No matter where, even if it's moving in one place, there's no way you're gonna miss the trend if you're following every single turn. But Nasdaq, you gotta follow every single movement from the biggest time frame all the way till. a good 10k or just 3000 and that you funded a good 10k so you cannot tell me nasdaq is not making money you are just not seeing the right shit you know you're not you're, you're thinking you're trading currencies that you're gonna hold for 60 66 days you know so this just how it is that's my input on nasdaq hope you guys are good yeah we can we can't we can't see clearly cheap please okay yeah we can okay um okay it's clear yeah i hope you guys can actually see this I hope you guys can see this uh this is just my input i don't ever do this i don't ever do actually give such input on nasdaq or any trading also because i don't believe good knowledge is given for free but this is one of my ways that i develop remember with trading it's all about being skillful and be able to change and and move with with current prices things change like the when the pandemic hit people they don't know what to do how do you trade nasdaq and you always gotta go into your technicals and study like okay fine um now how i used to do it the comfort of buying us had been a bit challenging but we still have to make money you still have to hit your goals so you gotta be challenges as a trader you must be flexible especially as a technical trader